You're either for the president or against the president. That's not a helpful conversation. And if we've lost track of what the war is about, then you can't even discuss whether we're winning it or losing it or whether we're achieving our objective or not. So we've got to go back to basics and understand what the problem is, and then if honorable people disagree about how to solve it, well, fine, that's yeah, a healthy there, thing. There's so much cynicism, of which I'm one, uh, uh, about whether or not the American people were even told the truth about why the war in Iraq started. I mean, there's a jillion reasons they seem to change with the season as to why it was done. I mean, it, it just seems to me, and of course, you're, as a former a government bureaucrat, if I may, if I may classify you there. I now, wish you or, wouldn't, but go okay, ahead. Okay, I understand, but you, you, you can't deny it. You got a government paycheck for a few years at least. Uh, the fact is, is that I, I think there's an arrogance, an elitism that says we can't let the American people know the truth. They're not smart enough to handle it. Well, I take a different approach. Whatever our politics, can we all agree that this is perhaps not the most articulate administration that's ever been elected? I think that'd be safe to say. Okay. That's a real problem. And by the way, this is a management issue, not a political issue. No one's good at everything, okay? Nobody is. When President Reagan was elected, he's obviously a great communicator, but he could not communicate to intellectuals. Had nothing to do with brains, it's just intellectuals talk differently and need to go at it differently. But it's important to communicate to intellectuals. So he hired Gene Kirkpatrick, who could. You bring in the talent. That's what you do as a leader of an organization. You see what the missing pieces are, and you fill them. President Reagan could not remember all 15 members of the Soviet Union's Politburo. So he hired a little dork like me who could remember that stuff. You bring in the people who can do what you can. This administration is unwilling to do that. Hey, thank you. Here's a comment. And that's a problem. Um, before I ask my question, you keep talking about the war as being a big challenge. <clears throat> But which war are you talking about? The GWRT, the Global War on Terrorism, the Iraqi War, the Afghanistan War. Well, now, wait a minute. Before you answer that, though, I want to know how much do you think the uh, defeat of the Russian uh, Army and Air Force in Afghanistan in 88 uh, <clears throat> by the Mujahideen led to the uh, downfall of the un unraveling of the Soviet Union? The defeat of the Russian troops in Afghanistan played a very key role in the ultimate ending of the Cold War. That was a major defeat for them and that was a big deal. As far as the Iraq War and Afghanistan and all that, it's all part of the larger conflict. The president calls it the War on Terror. There probably could be a better phrase for it, but that's what we call it. So it's all part of the same thing. Now, again, whether we should have gone into Iraq, when we did, how we did, honorable people can disagree. In World War II, we were attacked by Japan. A week later, we were at war with Germany and Italy. They never attacked us. But once the war started, you had to deal with the whole mess. In a sense, that's what's happening again. Now, again, whether we should have gone into Iraq when we did and how we did, people argue about that for the next 5,000 years. Well, and one of the problems that we have today, Herb, that we didn't have then, as an example, is that in those days, there were state actors. Uh, today, with the terrorism, the brand of terrorism that we are fighting, uh, these are folks who are transnational terrorists. They don't necessarily have a country as such. And so, it, you know, you, you, you fight a war against al-Qaeda, well, they say, we're, we need to go into Iraq, we need to go into Afghanistan, we need to go into Pakistan, wherever it's a little bit different problem, a harder problem in many ways, isn't it or not? Very hard. Here's the crux of it. The lesson of 9-11 is that we live in a world in which a small number of people can kill a large number of people very quickly. They can hijack airplanes and fly them into buildings. If they pour botulism into the Dallas water supply, you'll kill 200,000 people overnight they get their hands on a nuclear device, they can take out Houston, San Diego, Vancouver, Paris. That's the problem. And when you live in that kind of an environment where a small number of people can kill a large number of people very quickly, you cannot wait for it to happen. And the technical word for that is preemption. That's what it means. You preempt, you cannot wait for it to happen. If we lose Houston, getting the creeps who did it, isn't satisfactory. 
you want to stop it from happening. It's not like knocking over a 7-Eleven. No, that's, that's true. But so course, that's the nature yeah. of the problem, and yeah. that's why you have to move yeah. to do something. That now, again, people can disagree yeah. over how, but that's the problem. That would be a tragic thing, but in Dallas, you know, if some place has to go, I mean, Houston, uh, we, we'd put them up there, you know. <laughs> I'll <laughs> not, stay not, out of not that the, one. Not yeah. the people, but the city, if you know what I mean. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, I was going to ask what, in your opinion, is a good way for us to recapture that determination and that unity that this nation had immediately after 9-11 when you'd see members of Congress from both parties unite and you'd see the president determined to, you know, to go out and get bin Laden. I think we've seemed to have lost that determination. I'd like to see if we could get it back. Yeah, it's become very partisan very quickly and that's a shame. You know, you, you can take the extreme view which is, well, it'll take another 9-11, and then everyone will come together again. But that's a horrible price to pay for that. It's up to us. You know, this is our war. We're going to have to survive it. If you go back to World War II, if you think there was political unity, you haven't read your history. People disagreed, but they agreed about one thing, which is, we're going to win this thing. Everything else they disagreed about, but they agreed about that. That's what we've lost. And my suspicion is there's no overnight solution to this. We'd better start teaching our children. And what we have to teach them is who we are, what Western civilization is, and why it's worth defending. If we can do that, we'll be a long way toward draining some of this bitter partisanship out and finding our way forward. Okay, in just a couple of minutes that we have left, uh, Herb, you've given us some good suggestions here. Any more uh, concrete things about what that viewer specifically can do. Educate him or herself, obviously. You know, be involved. I don't know if you need to be involved politically or what, what do you need to do? If I had to make one suggestion, it would be this. Think before you vote. You know, when people choose what model cell phone they want or what DVD to rent at the video place Friday night, they spend a lot of time looking and comparing and thinking. And yet when we choose someone to put in office, you say, oh, he's got a nice family and I like his dog. We're really electing the people who are the crew of the 747 that we're on. Now, honorable people will disagree, and that's fine. But if everyone could agree that we're going to take this very seriously and demand that the candidates who will be presenting themselves this year tell us what they plan to do and how they plan to go about it and how they see it will be a long way forward. I'm, and I'm, then, by the way, if we disagree over what to do, that's fine. But we have a right to insist that they explain it to us. I'm trying to think if I remember any political candidate on e either party talking about either of these three challenges that you're talking about. Well, that tells you something, doesn't it? Tells me a lot, yeah. Okay. Well, there yeah. you have it. I had some degree of cynicism about the candidates to begin with, so now it's even bigger than it was before, I suppose. Anyway, we appreciate you being here. Uh, we really Thank do. you for having uh, me. Keep up the good work and what you do. We appreciate your joining us as well because, you know, whether or not you believe what Herb Meyer has to say, uh, then we all have our work cut out for us if Western civilization is to continue as we know it. If you missed part one, you can view it on our website at www.frtv.org. We hope you continue to watch this program, and we thank you very much for inviting us in to talk about things that matter with people who care. If you would like to purchase a DVD or video of this program for $20 plus $5 postage and handling, and in Texas, applicable tax, call 214-442-1600 or email info at frtv.org. Visit McChristian on the web at www.frtv.org. Production of McQuistion is made possible in part by individual viewers, the Hatton W. Sumner's Foundation for the Study of Teaching and Self-Government, 
Hillcrest Foundation founded by Mrs. W. W. Carruth Sr., C.F. & Company LLP, serving Dallas-Fort Worth and the Southwest since 1956, and Sundown Ranch, providers of comprehensive and co-occurring disorder treatment to adolescents and young adults.